like like to different guests where do you think you're at the french laundry like what are you expecting here you know like saying yeah, like yeah. it's the epitome and and i always had that in the back of my mind and although i i loved what eleni was doing i just i thought okay i i almost put myself in grant's shoes and was like i need to do his trajectory like, okay. I need to go yeah. to the laundry before I can go work for him. Uh huh. So uh, that's that's, that's how a good I, way to look at it. Yeah, yeah. Kind of, I thought so. <laughs> and what's what's awesome is that you're what those restaurants are awesome. You know, to me is like you're a front of the house person. Mm-hmm. You're you know you're interested in the food, but you're like I want to go work for that chef. Right. I don't want to go work for Grant. Not you know you don't even know who the fucking GM is of Alinea. You're just like I just no. want to go work for Grant. You know. Right. And that's that's a testament to those chefs, you know. Absolutely. And I had, you know, I had a whole list of, like, my five-year plan and how I was going to plan this out. And yeah. I was going to go work at a one-star restaurant and then two and then three and, like, <laughs> go my way up. <laughs> and, uh, and, like, go and work at Bill Robichon in, in uh, Las Vegas yeah. or something like that. And um, at, at that point in time when I had applied there, I or, like, put it on my list of, like, places to eventually apply one day. I had tried to get a reservation so many times. Like, I'm just going to go work there. If yeah. I can't get a reservation, I'm just going to go work there. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, ultimately decided uh, against Alinea for the time being, um, despite me finding, you know, his entire story, like, so inspiring. It really and, is, yeah. And I thought, you know, if he can be, if he could, obviously he, he regained his sense of taste, but if he could be the chef that couldn't taste, like, I could be the psalm that couldn't drink. Yeah. So cool. That made That's me feel very super cool. Hard. Yeah, and I was I was actually able to share that with someone. Him. Write that on a banner and send that to Sarah. <laughs> All right. I was I was able to. Unfortunately, when Jason and I went into dine to celebrate our engagement a couple years ago, he he wasn't at Alinea that night. I think he was at Rooster or something. Yeah, yeah. But we were able to leave him a gift, and I, I wrote a letter that you know expressed like how much that meant to me and yeah. it personally affected me. So I'm glad that I was able to you know share share that with him at some point. So cool. Um, but yeah, after you know I got that first kind of acceptance email from the French Laundry that said, hey, we'd love to come have you interview. Um, you know, I put in my two weeks notice and and that was that. So you put in a two weeks notice for an interview. Oh, yeah. That's just like, you didn't have the job. No. You're just like, but at this point, are you like, I'm getting this fucking job? I'm getting this job. There, okay, got you. The, I, will so, ta- I will literally take any job. Yeah. I will wash dishes. Yeah. I don't care. I'm getting out of here. This is the right direction. I'm leaving. Got you. And I was in a another like, I, I shouldn't I shouldn't say another, but I was in a very uh, abusive relationship at the time. Yeah. Because I was in a bad place, mm-hmm. and uh, you know that I that person actually ended up trying to um, like follow me up to now. Okay. Valley, which is the whole. So that was a whole other thing. A I whole to other with. thing. Did but he, um, did he make it? He he got up there and. Funny enough, and you'll know this person, but ended up at Goose and Gander. Uh huh. Was sitting at the bar, asking people, just asking random people if they knew me. If they knew you. Yeah. Whoa. And was like, "Hey, my ex girlfriend works the laundry." Like asking around, "Hey, do you know Sarah?" And then who was sitting at the bar? But Ian Karens. And was like, he's like, "Yeah, I know Sarah. She's a good friend." And like, oh, I heard she's dating some guy. And Ian is the first one to like step up and be like, yeah, that's my best friend. What of it? Like, yeah. I'm totally like, like two weeks in to yeah. like me bringing at the restaurant. Already did he had even my know? Back. Did he know your story? No, no, no. He's just like, who the fuck is who this guy? Who the fuck are you? Just yeah. ready to have my back and Jason's back and yeah. It, what's he doing, Ian? Uh, Ian is working on. So he does R and D for this kind of small batch plant-based i think it's predominantly vegan yeah meal delivery service okay but the idea is it is this like luxury vegan cuisine that you'll just assemble in your home and so oh, it's working cool. on like different iterations of like non-dairy milk yeah it's not just simply like nut milk okay and, is so he yeah. here is he here in town he's in santa barbara santa barbara okay mm-hmm. i gotta do a podcast with him yeah, I think if you really, sure. especially if you want to go into like the food science world, and yeah, he's, I mean, he's yeah. the guy to to geek out he's with. He's taught for sure. classes. I mean, I it's funny because you know we're talking, looking back now, and I remember when Tyler moved into the house with Jason mm-hmm. and him, mm-hmm. and it was just like you know, there's a lot of fucking talent in this house. There's a right. lot of energy. There's a lot of like rambunctiousness. Like 
give me my success, you know? It's <laughs> yeah. like, fucking, it was, it, it was awesome. Um, so. I think everyone that lived in that house has now worked or done some contracting work for Truffle Shuffle. <laughs> <laughs> Truffle Shuffle's just taking, just taking all the best all chefs the in the world, baby. I mean, honestly, the, they, it's a nice gig, mm-hmm. you know? You don't feel, uh, when you join a restaurant as a cook, you're loyal, you have to be loyal, mm-hmm. you know, for at least a year, you know, minimum. Um, but you guys have this sense of like, okay, I can go up and do a class with them and then that's it. And then six months later, if I pick up the phone and call you guys, it'd be like, oh yeah, let's do a class. Yeah. It's, and it's like you pick up right where you left off. And that is the, one of the hardest things to do with, you know, mentorship and mm-hmm. leaders and all that when you're trying to leave restaurants, especially. Right. Um, so how did your interview go for the French Laundry? Uh, it went really well. I, inter- am I allowed to see people's names? Yeah, fuck yeah. Okay. So I interviewed Shut with, them out, baby. <laughs> with Olivia and, and Michael Manillo and, uh, sorry, Olivia Wallace. She's amazing. Olivia actually. Wallace. School yeah. me on her a little bit. Uh, classically trained violinist turned maitre d at the french Laundry. got you yeah she was yeah. um i've heard her name uh but michael manillo is still the gm still there, the gm right that's correct yeah still the gm got you um infamous champagne saver gone viral yeah uh, oh yeah <laughs> okay but no but uh extraordinarily sweet people from you know very very serious and i think i can look back now and it's kind of one of those things where you you go into college like right after high school you look back on it you're like man i wish i'd give myself a couple years to mature before i had gone there oh for sure i i felt that way at the french laundry i wish it had been like my second three-star restaurant heard because i didn't know what i was getting into i i didn't even know you know you're just pushed into this culture and there's no adjustment period and there can't be no there, there can't be any adjustment period. You're thrown into a running hamster wheel. Right. <laughs> it's just like, go. You got to keep <laughs> up. And so the fact when you like, you know, I remember Olivia was so kind, but it was always like, hey, you need to fix your hair. Pull your hair back. So that's out of place. Like, no, you, some, yeah. something's always like wrong. Yeah. And you're going home feeling you super know, self-conscious. Super self-conscious. Yeah. And especially in the dining room, you're always, you are on display. Yeah. So you are there to be criticized by employers and other staff members and guests, right? You're a visual representation of the restaurant. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, as as nice as you think you look, like it's never it's <laughs> you, never quite good. You're enough. walking out you're walking out the door like, damn, killing it, girl. Damn it. And then you get to work and, and they're like, like no, wrong. no, no. No. <laughs> and there there were Jason had put both of my silk blouses one week in like trying to be sweet and do the laundry oh no in the washer and i sh- and i'm like i don't i don't have another blouse jason just ruined both of my 90 dollars silk blouses like yeah what do i do oh my god so it was it's always you know in the in the dining room it's just it's i suppose it's like funny for sure funny problems yeah. that you run into um did you work with dylan kesson i, I did dylan yeah. kesson he's yeah. the man i worked with him me and Charlie mm-hmm. Apple both worked with him at uh, Tallulah Thames in mm-hmm. Newport, Rhode Island. No, he's um, he's great. Yeah, yeah, he's a yeah. good guy. And he's still there. And he actually came in to dine when I was captaining at Bennu. Oh so yeah, felt like everything was. Kind yeah, of full I circle. haven't, dude. I haven't talked to Dylan in such a long time. Mm-hmm. I gotta, I gotta hit him up. Yeah, that's so awesome. Yeah. Um, what were your first positions over there? Uh, at the laundry, I was a. I was a, what they call a kitchen server. Okay. But you can basically think of that as like a food runner. I got you. Yeah. So the the whole time I was there, for the year I was there, I was a food runner, which everyone starts as, unless you start, the, the position lower than that in the dining room, um, you can be a, a coffee server. You're just pretty much buffing glasses, polishing silverware, and doing making the coffee, coffee all day. Need. Yeah, exactly. Um, and you don't really go onto the floor, which I, I did do that a couple times yeah um because you know it's important to learn you know every aspect um but mostly i was i was running food and so you know the challenge in that is the menu changes every single service yeah so even if you're working i mean the worst part would be we would do something called a quad where you work one night you work a double the next day and then you work morning service the following day so night into double into morning why that's just the way the because schedule it, yeah. would work. Well, yeah. I think um, something that I noticed about them is every everybody gets two days off. Yes. 
Mm-hmm. Which I think that's why that needed it, to happen. It, it does, yeah. They, you have, you were pretty much guaranteed for the most part, at least during the time I was there, that you were going to have a double once a week. Yeah. But you did get your two you days did, off. You did two days off. Right, yeah, exactly. so whenever that was kind of, depending on where this like quad was scheduled, that was a popular mm-hmm. grouping. It's usually the AM, PM Mm-hmm. Like teams, right? That switch off on a two days off. Right, exactly. And then there's two days that you didn't serve lunch. Am I right? Monday, Tuesday? That's right. Monday, okay, Tuesday is no lunch. Yeah. Yeah. I just remember that because I was sleeping on Tyler's floor. <laughs> and you'd be like, this is the way it works. You yeah. Know? <laughs> like, but then you think about like the menu changing and potentially going in sh- back to back, shift to shift to shift to shift. I mean, I'm. Four I'll be menu like, changes? Oh, yeah. Oh! And then you're setting something down on the table and you're like, wait. What is that? Was that two days ago, or is that? Oh menu? yeah, when you work so much like that, your yeah. days start crawling. You're like, all right, wait, what? Um, you're like, can you not do beef into beef tonight? Can right. you do like beef into lamb, right, so right. I know what menu we're on? It's like, oh dang it, that was the menu for lunch, not for dinner. <laughs> yeah. uh, but that was that was definitely an adjustment, and you know, knowing those menus that are constantly changing. I think by the time you're you know you're there for a few years, yeah. you know, you see the same protein, you know the purveyors, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. then it becomes a little bit easier to just kind of plug and play. Yeah, yeah. For the same as a cook, meals. like once you exactly. know the chef's style, you're like, oh, okay, I kind of know what you're right. Want. I know what you mean for that exactly yeah, yeah. um but that was that was definitely difficult and unique about the french laundry and i mean we continue to do that to a certain extent at truffle shuffle where we change our sunday class every single week yeah who was your uh, who's the cdc when you started there it was david breeden david breeden was cdc mm-hmm. so tyler was already working there tyler was already there tyler gotcha. was the first person i saw when i came in for my stage jason said the same fucking thing yeah I Damn, know. crazy. Know, isn't that wild? So he pointed you to where you needed to go? He did. So I was, was he in just, a rush? No. Was he busy? <laughs> he was expediting service. Oh, okay. And it was in the temporary kitchen. Yeah. So I worked, I started when they were in the temp kitchen, and then oh, I left when okay. we were in the new kitchen. Okay, got you, got you, okay. Um, and so Tyler was expediting service. I remember, I remember Ian being on, like, fish or canapé or something and then i think jason jason is convinced that during this time he was on the fish station as yeah well. he remembers me very clearly from that day um but i remember just thinking this is and i remember thanking tyler yeah too like thank you so thank you so much yeah. for having me here today and being just not having any idea that now you know we would be so close and feel yeah, like family yeah, yeah. um yeah it's it's kind of wild but i remember thinking it was the quietest kitchen i had ever been in Everyone was just doing their Can own hear thing. Pin drop. Absolutely. Yeah. It was my so I was already sold. I don't know if I'm like the odd man out in, in the dining room, but I was already sold after seeing the kitchen. Okay. I wasn't watching people running the food. Yeah, you're like, I wasn't good watching shit. people picking up the food. Yeah. You couldn't even see the dining room. I wasn't I wasn't in a I was in a suit, but I was not in the French laundry yeah. suit, so I couldn't go out onto the floor. Uh, so I couldn't see what was going on there. All I could see was the kitchen. And I, you know, I see the stars on the wall. I see the, you know, the the laundry pin logo everywhere and looking across into the garden. And I was just, I was blown away. Mm-hmm. And it's, um, I guess in your mind, you probably said to yourself, I get to represent this. Right. All of this. Yeah. And, you know, that's a pretty cool tool to... You know, so I was reading an article the other day about uh, uh, just how you should be nicer when you go out to eat mm-hmm. in a time like this where people are struggling. And um, he's like, you know, no matter where you are, what restaurant you're at, even if the food is shitty and the, the space where you're sitting is shitty, if you have a great server, you forget all of that, mm-hmm. you know. And and he's, one of the statements he made was, I don't know how they did it. And to be honest, like, I don't fucking know how they do it. But when you're sitting down and you have that great server and you feel good, mm-hmm. you feel like you're being taken care of and right. you got butterflies and you're like, oh, I wonder what's next. Or I hope, I hope they have more time for me. Yeah. Like I hope they can come hang out, you know, right. and talk more. Right. Um, what are you doing tomorrow? Let's go wine tasting. Like shit like that, you mm-hmm. know? But, uh, that's, that's why I've been inspired more and more to talk to more front of the house, you know, cause your, your stories need to be, need to be heard for sure. Yeah. So you're standing there, you see the stars. Um, how many days do you have to stash? One. One day. Okay, mm-hmm. got you. So I had gone in for my, my official interview that morning. Yeah. 
Um, and that was kind of, that was in the courtyard. 